Hello everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. In this video we're going to look at the OSPF Network LSA or LSA type number 2. So the network LSAs are originated by designated routers to represent the network segment. This implies that the network LSA is originated for broadcast and NBMA networks because those are the OSPF network types that elect a designated router. And if you remember about the designated router, the designated router is used to reduce the number of uh, adjacencies and LSA flooding in a network's segment. So let me go back to the drawings from my previous videos to show this to you briefly. So let me hide this. Here's what the OSP of adjacencies would look like without a designated router. So all of those five routers would have to become fully adjacent with each other, creating a number of adjacencies represented in the below diagram. But if a designated router is chosen, the number of OSP of adjacencies is significantly reduced. And instead of becoming fully adjacent with each, with each other, uh, the routers only become fully adjacent with the designated router. So that is the main purpose of the designated router. And the network LSA is generated to represent all of these routers uh, in one LSA. So let's look at that in more detail. So the network LSAs advertise the multi-access network and all routers, including the designated routers, attached to that network. And, and like router LSAs, the network LSAs are flooded only within the originating area. So the network LSA is really not that complicated. It only has a few fields that are unique to this LSA. I mean, this part here is really the common LSA header, which is the same for all LSA types, with the exception of the type and link state ID fields. So the type field is obviously going to be number two since we're looking at the network LSA. And the link state ID for the network LSA is the IP address of the designated router's interface to the network. So let me actually write that down here. Link state ID is the IP address of the designated router's interface in that network. So it's not just any interface of the designated router, it's specific to that network, the network segment that the LSA is representing. But then there's the network mask, which specifies the address or subnet mask used on this network. So right here, so this could be something like 255.255.255.0, for example. And then the attached router fields list the router IDs of all routers on the multi-access network that are fully adjacent with the DR and the DR itself. So that's why you can have a different number of attached routers in this part of the LSA. Of course, depending on how many routers are connected to that network segment. 
But here you could find something like 1.1.1.1 and then 2.2.2.2. But here's where you need to pay attention because the link state ID was the IP address of the designated router's interface, but now the attached router is the router ID. So I'm going to write that down as well. So this is the router IDs of connected routers. Okay, but let's look at a packet capture so you can see the difference. So I have the same packet capture open here. But now let's go to LSA type number two, which is the network LSA. So you can see all the fields here that we just discussed. The link state ID is the IP address of the interface. Advertising router is 5.5.5.5. Uh, I'll just call it R5 for simplicity. And then here the net mask is 255.255.255.252. And you can see attached routers uh, are R5 and then 4.4.4.4, which I'm going to call R4 for simplicity. But something interesting to note here. So if you know that the IP address of the designated router, the interface IP address is 10.0.20.2 and the net mask of that network segment is 255.255.255.252, then you know that the network address is 10.0.20.0. So this is something interesting that you can find from the network LSA. So let me go back a little bit and tie this together with the previous video about the router LSAs. So if you remember, the router LSA lists all of the OSPF links for the router that originated that LSA. So we should be able to find this network, which we've just looked at in the type 2 LSA, in type um, number 1 LSA. And it's actually right here. See? Ah, I keep hitting the wrong line. <laughs> there we go. So, link state ID and this transit network match. And this is really one of the key elements how the router is able to build the link state database and the topology and then make route calculations based on that information. Now let's jump to this other document that I have open here just to see what the network LSA looks like in the OSBF database when you're viewing it from the command line. So the command show IP OSBF database network is used to observe the network LSA. So right here, oh man, why do I keep doing that? Okay, let's scroll down. I think it's here. So here you can see the command. I'm trying to highlight it. There you go. Again, uh, data is short for database. 
but here you can see the link state ID. This is the IP address of the interface of the, the designated router. And then here's the advertising router, the router ID. And then here you can see the network mask is say a slash 24. So 255.255.255.0. And here you can see the attached routers. So 10.0.0.113 and 10.0.0.120. So this is what it will look like if you would draw the topology. So ignore the left side where you have 10.0.0.112 and 10.0.0.111. And this is actually an exercise that we might do in one of my videos because you should be able to draw the full topology by looking at the OSBF database. So here's just a quick glimpse of how that will work. But that's it for this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.